Matthew, let me start with you up in Dartmouth. Uh, put this in context. If there is indeed, as it appears to be, a transition deal, as we just heard, it's not a final deal, but a transition deal, how good is this for the economy in the UK, in Europe? It definitely helps the UK economy and therefore the European economy. Um, it's important to keep in mind there's so much uncertainty about what Brexit is going to entail uh, for the companies that operate in London and more broadly throughout the global economy uh, and for the people working there. Um, issues about the trade agreements that the UK will or won't have with other countries, whether people will be able to move as freely in and out of London and more generally the UK as they have been is a huge issue. Uh, one measure I think of the challenges the UK economy already faces coming into Brexit is it has had very slow growth, in fact, in some measures, negative growth in labor productivity in recent years. And that's the backbone of rising standards of living for any country. So the more that the UK government can provide some sense of what Brexit is going to look like, the more companies and people are going to make the investments and make the decisions they need. And last week, Unilever was um, discussing whether they might move their headquarters globally just to the Netherlands and, and pull some of their activities out of the, out of the UK. That may have focused some minds there. Uh, Dan, in the market, you take a look at sterling, 140, although not on the highs of the year, and you have a sell-off in gilts. Now, uh, yields backing up by about four basis points. W where is the asymmetric risk in the market? I think the risk is still to the sterling downside. I mean, there's a lot of focus on the sterling USD rate, but the really important rate is the cross rate with the euro. And if you look at that exchange rate, that cross rate, sterling really isn't very cheap. It needs to be cheap to compensate for the risks that your reports have been noting. Uh, we think euro sterling cross could get up above 90. Uh, if certainly if this deal doesn't actually materialize by, by Thursday, it could get there pretty quickly. Um, but you know, if, even if it does, we think at these levels of that cross rate, you're already kind of pricing in a fairly successful uh, negotiation round. And as you noted, there's still a lot of uncertainty over the next few months. The, um, the transition is contingent on a, on a final exit deal being reached. So, so Matthew, can we infer anything about the ultimate deal if, in fact, there's a trans transition deal done here? Does that indicate that maybe the parties can get together on this so maybe they can get together on the ultimate deal? Maybe, but again, time's of the essence. As your colleague just reported in London, it's a little over a year until Brexit Day, but there's so much that has to be done between now and then to understand what the rules of the road are going to be. Uh, again, come back to trade and investment rules. Uh, the UK has been one of the most open economies to international trade investment for decades. Um, that has been a real co comparative advantage for the country to have a lot of headquarters for financial services and other things. Uh, what it's going to mean for the UK, if they were to exit uh, their current trading agreements, uh, many Many people think that technically they become a bit like North Korea in terms of having no formal legal ties uh, through trade with the World Trade Organization. So it's going to take a lot of calendar time to figure out exactly what will happen come exit. Um, so any sense that there's a, a path for transition period is probably a good thing at this point.